Hello, this is uh, Reverend Bradford Hall, the author of By Grace Through Faith. This is a video introduction to chapter 13. The baptism of the Holy Spirit we're going to talk a little bit about. Little boy was flying a kite which had soared so high almost to be out of sight. Seeing him look so intensely upward, a man asked him what he had there. A kite, sir, the boy replied. A kite, said the gentleman. How can that be? I don't see it. Ah, I feel it pulling, sir, was the boy's reply. This should be our evidence that our Savior is above. We should feel him pulling. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. Many people have had an experience like that of that little girl who heard the Holy Ghost, as the Holy Spirit is sometimes called, mentioned in church from time to time, but so vaguely and frequently she could only guess if it's sort of a ghost this might be. So one day she ventured down to a dark furnace room in the church's cellar. She decided with the child's firm lodges that a spooky place like this must be where the Holy Ghost lurked. In fact, adult believers often act as if the Holy Spirit was hiding in the church cellar. They may know something about the Holy Spirit, but they don't really know him personally or realize that he's God in the same way the Son of and the Father are God. When we read the Bible, many people are surprised to find that the Holy Spirit was at the very dawn of time. The Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters, Genesis 1, 2. And many are amazed to find out that there are approximately 100 references to the Holy Spirit throughout the Old and New Testaments. Nevertheless, the Spirit's role is fundamental both to creation and to the life of the believer. When a person comes to know Jesus as Lord and Savior, he receives Christ into his heart. The Spirit of God comes and joins with the Spirit of the believer. This indwelling Spirit reproduces the life of Jesus in the believer's life. What then is the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Well, the baptism in the Holy Spirit is an empowering for service that takes place in the life of the Christian. In Acts 1, 5 through 8, we are immersed in the Spirit's life and power. To illustrate this, if we were to, if we drank water from a glass, then the water would be inside us. However, if we went to the beach, stepped into the ocean, then we would be in the water. We receive it, as it were, a drink of the Holy Spirit when we are saved. But when we're baptized in the Spirit, it is if the initial drink becomes an ocean that completely surrounds us. In fact, the word itself, baptize, uh, is the Greek word baptizo, which means to completely immerse. Just as the indwelling Spirit that Christians receive when they are saved reproduce the life of Jesus, so the outpoured or baptizing spirit produces, reproduces the ministry of Jesus, including miracles and healings. Okay, so, so why do we need the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, it's very clear that we need a power beyond ourselves for service and ministry in Christ's kingdom. When Jesus gave the Great Commission in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, he knew that his disciples absolutely could not fulfill it on their own power. Therefore, he had a special gift in store for them. It was his plan to give them the same power, that the power of the Spirit. So immediately after giving the Great Commission, Jesus commanded the disciples not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father, what the Father promised, he said. You heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized in the Holy Spirit not many days from now. That's Acts 1, 4 through 5. He further promised, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be my witnesses, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the remotest parts of the earth, Acts 1.8. The disciples waited in Jerusalem as Jesus had commanded, and one day they were all together praying, and suddenly there came, a noise, came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, it filled the whole house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them tongues as a fire distributing themselves. They rested on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That's Acts 2, 3 through 4. Then Peter explained to the crowd that had gathered that they were seeing the working of God's Spirit and told them about Jesus. 
The Christian church began that day with the disciples and there were 3,000 people who joined them as a result of the day's work of the Holy Spirit. Wouldn't that be amazing to have 3,000 get saved in our churches? Praise the Lord. We can undertake making disciples of all nations with some degree of dissent without the baptism of the Spirit. But when we do, we are undertaking a supernatural task with limited power. Okay, first of all, it is the will of God. It's his commandment that we be baptized or filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. The knowledge reality of the empowering spirit enables us to reproduce the works of Jesus. When I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it can take place at a moment you confess faith in Christ, as in the case of the first Gentile convert, Cornelius in Acts 10, 44 through 46, and Acts 11, 15 through 16, but often it occurred sometimes after the salvation experience, Acts 8, 12 through 17. Is there anything to be afraid of? Okay. Some people fear that when they ask for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they, what they experience won't be authentic working of the Holy Spirit. Well, once they do ask for it, they always are glad they did. God doesn't cause anything to do us we don't want him to do. His gifts are good and they are perfect, James 1.17. Jesus said, now suppose one of you fathers asked by your son for a fish. Will he give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he's asked for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If then, being evil, uh, you know how to give good, good children, how much more will your heavenly Father give you the Holy Spirit to those that ask him? Luke 11, 11 through 13. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is even a better gift than any material gift you can receive. And God wants you to have it because he loves you and wants the very best for you. What should I do before asking? Well, the Bible says that a wise man counts the cost before he begins to build the tower. Luke 14, 28. The beautiful experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a free gift, but you need to be willing to fully submit to God to receive it. Jesus will respond to his totally yielded vessel. He never asks anything of you that you are incapable of giving, nor does he ever fail to give you something greater in return that you give. The joy he gives you through total obedience far outweighs anything you could possibly give up. There's more important consideration. In Acts 8, a man named Simon, deeply involved in the occult, wanted to buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter sharply rebuked Simon, commanding him to repent. Therefore, if you ever have any time, anything to do with the occult, Ouija boards, fortune tellers, seances, horoscopes, ESP, transcendental meditation, hypnotism, anything like that, you must renounce and turn away from all such sinful participation and ask God for forgiveness and cleansing. How do you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? You only have to do two things. First, once you've accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, you must ask God to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, ask and you shall, shall be given unto you. Second, you need to believe that you have, in fact, received the gift from God. The Apostle Paul writing the place said, did you receive the spirit of the works by the law or hearing of faith? The answer is obviously faith. You have to believe that if you ask, you'll receive it. Pray this sincerely if you desire to receive the baptism in God's Holy Spirit right now. Heavenly Father, at this moment I come to you. I thank you that Jesus saved me. I pray that the Holy Spirit might come upon me. Lord Jesus, baptize me now in the Holy Spirit. I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit right now by faith in your word. May the anointing and the glory and the power of God come upon me right now and in my life right now. May I be empowered for service from this day forward. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for baptizing me in the Spirit. Amen. Now, having asked and received, begin to practice the power of the Spirit. An ideal place to begin is the first apostles did, praising him in a new language. To do this, begin praising God out loud with whatever words come to you. Tell him how much you love him, you thank you, you worship him, you yield to him. Now let him give you new words to praise you've never heard before. Praise him in those words. You'll find that this can be a very rewarding experience of communion with God that will build up your faith. Continue to pray each to God each day in that language that the Holy Spirit has given you. And that will give you power to be used by God. But this prayer language is just one of the gifts that God wants to give you through the baptism of his Spirit. We're going to talk about in the next episode about some of the other gifts of the Spirit. God bless you for today. 
and uh, we'll be back again with uh, chapter 14 in a little bit.